the tab or the upset is uh, interfering with my vice jaws, so I'm obliged to hold the stock at a slight angle to the vice as I work up this corner. Once you've got your bend complete, we're going to measure off the thickness of the tab plus your inch and a half for the jaw plus your quarter inch for the spring material and I'd like you to make a center punch mark It's probably going to be around about two inches down from this corner. Once you've got your measurement in place, your center punch mark, we're going to come in with the fuller and we're going to tilt the end of the fuller towards the top so you're going to create a slope to the shoulder. I want you to drive in three blows, come next to it, go in two blows, come next to it, go in one blow, and you're just going to create a ramp back up to parent stock. You can see I was a little too vertical with my shoulders here. The more slope you have to the shoulder, the more this is going to feed into the circumference of the spring. So the steeper it is, the more it's going to look blocky like mine. If you can get more of a slope, you'll have a more graceful entry into the spring material. So here's the forging thus far. I've got my six inches between the shoulders there. So now I divide that by two, the three inch mark, and then I'm going to come back half the width of my slot punch. I want a half inch hole. I know that my drift will push for the most part, but I can be about a sixteenth oversized, so I'm going to have a nine sixteenth slot punch. So I'm going to come back half the width of my slot punch. Let's call it 5 16th, a little less than that, and I'm going to punch across the two. So my next job is to punch the slot punch. Once I punch my hole, I'm going to come in with a tapered round drift. No sense uh, getting a, a through and through drift. Tapered is fine. I'm just going to drive that in until I fill up that hole. with everything flat. I'm going to come out and I'm going to crowd this shoulder, which means I'm going to put the shoulder as close to the pivoting point, the edge of the anvil, as I can. Normally I say lay off as much as the thickness of the tab. Not in this case. I want to crowd that shoulder because I'm going to drive this material into the jaw piece. Let's crowd the shoulder, bend that down to about 60 degrees. Once you've got your 60 degree bend put up, I'm going to put this on the top and I want you to come in with your hammer in such a way that if you missed, you'd hit your knee. Don't hit flat because you're just going to make this thing roll out. So you have to come in at a fairly steep angle and set that shoulder down. Before we get going with the layout, we need to knock some of this bark off. Changing the direction of your filing creates some hatch marks so you can see if you're filing flat or not. Well now that we've knocked the bark off, I've sprayed the top with some die chem. You could use a permanent marker, that would be fine. And I'm just going to use some dogwood dividers here. And of course my forging is not 
parallel sided so you're going to see this line divide Um, and just to note, I've got a set of uh, vice spaces in here just to stop the jaws from racking. You can cut down to the depth that you require with your file. You're not limited to just putting a line there. So I'm going to take this down another eighth of an inch or so, and it's just material gone, less material to file. Now I have a 10 or 12 inch long three square file, three square being triangular if you will, and I am going to Come along here, find that groove, and I'm just going to start making my V groove. I, I like the three square file because I can see that horizontal surface on the top and it's easier to keep it horizontal as opposed to a square file where you would just be seeing the corner and it's easier to go off. I can come back later with a square file and uh, increase the angle to 90 degrees, but at the moment the three square is going to do it for me. So there's my result so far and I'm just about to put a square file in there and open out what is now 60 degrees to 90 degrees. As you come to bend the spring material, know that by punching a hole in here, you've made a weak spot in the bar. This is weaker than the bit next to it. So as you bend, this is going to bend more readily and you're going to end up with an apex of material. A couple of workarounds, you can either quench this material before you start to bend, which is going to eat into your heat and time, or you can bend, get the apex, and then go to the bic later and drive the apex down. I don't know that one is better than the other. There are a number of ways to wrap this around the pipe. Your basic is two pair of tongs or whatever you've got, a pair of vice grips, etc., and either push or pull um, this around, remembering that the piece around the hole is going to bend first. If you had it available, a scrolling wrench is nice just to pull the material around you might not have that yet and again if you had it available a larger pair of tongs so you can squeeze the two ends together as they come around I'm just going to use the two pair of tongs and forget the rest of it and we'll see how far we get You can see I've got a little bit more filing to do, but that in essence is the vertical filing vise. I would be tempted to case harden that once you've finished, get rid of the sharp edges so you don't catch your knuckles on them, and then you're ready to make rivets. My tools and apron were supplied by friends of mine. If you're in the market for custom equipment, consider giving them your business.